If you heard the word SCL, what comes to your mind? SCL has something to do with our topic for today, which is Information Technology in Support of Student-Centered Learning. The idea of student-centered learning is not a recent idea. In fact, as early as the 20th century, educational educators such as John Dewey argued for a highly active and individualized pedagogical methods which place the student at the center of the teaching learning process. In this lesson, we shall see how the teacher can expand his options to make himself more effective and relevant in the 21st millennium information age. From the traditional teacher-centered learning approach, practical helps on designing and adapting student learning activities shall be examined. In addition, suggestions shall be made on how a student-centered classroom or SCL can be supported by information technology or IT. The traditional classroom. The traditional classrooms are usually arranged with neat columns and rows of student chairs, while the teacher stands in front of the classroom or sits behind his or her desk to maintain classroom discipline and also to allow the teacher to control classroom activities through lecture presentation and teacher-led discussions. The teacher has to also manage misbehavior in class as students start to talk among themselves or simply stare away in lack of attention. To prevent this situation, teachers often make students take time to work individually on worksheets can help the situation. Another option is now presented and this is adopting the idea of developing students to be independent learners with the end of making them critical and creative thinkers. The SCL Classroom John Dewey has described traditional learning as a process in which the teacher pours information to student learners, much like pouring water from a jug into cup. This learning approach is generally known as direct instruction, and it has worked well for obtaining many kinds of learning outcomes. The problem with the direct instruction approach to learning, however, is the fact that the world societies have begun to change. In industrialized societies, we find knowledge-based economies in which workers depend on information that can be accessed through information and communication technologies or ICT. Desiring to gain effectiveness, efficiency, and economy in administration and instruction, Schools in these developed economies have also adopted the support of ICT. Their students have now become active, not passive learners, who can interact with other learners, demonstrating independence and self-awareness in the learning process. Generally, the new school classroom environment is characterized by students individually or in groups. First, Performing computer word processing for text or graph presentations. Second, preparing PowerPoint presentation. Third, searching for information on the internet. And last, brainstorming on ideas, problems, and project plans as needed. 
The teacher facilitating instruction also gives individualized instruction to serve individual needs. Observably, there is a departure from traditional worksheet, read and answer, drill and practice activities. Students also no longer need to mark the test of peers since the computer has programs for test evaluation and computerized scoring of results. Given this new trend in teaching and learning, it must be pointed out, however, that traditional classroom activities, especially in less developed countries, will continue to have a strong place in the classroom. In spite of this setback experience in some countries, the option has now been opened for the modern teacher to shift gears to student-centered learning. A chalkboard, a desk, the homework, the books. The day begins and ends when the bells ring. For centuries now, this has defined what all of us think about school. We have come to believe that this is the one way that students will learn. And with that belief, we have taught all of our students in pretty much the exact same way. But the world has changed, and what it means to be ready to succeed in the future has also changed. That means our model of learning must change. It's happening now, and it needs to happen even more. In more places, for all students, especially for those for whom the current system isn't working. There is strong data that shows we need to rethink learning. Like remodeling a house, we're not just adding a new coat of paint, we're updating the outdated parts and making it more modern and efficient, strengthening what works and fixing what doesn't. Gone are the days when some students can excel and others just get by. Our society needs all kids to excel at high levels. And to make this happen, we need to engage our students like never before. This is student-centered learning. It incorporates a student's skills and interests into the learning process, making the experience more personalized and involving the student in his or her own future. What makes this work? There are four key principles of student-centered learning. Number one, learning is personalized. Personalized learning happens when teachers know students, have strong relationships with them, and can meet students where they are in their development. Number two, learning is competency-based. Learning is about the information and skills a student has mastered, not just moving through a curriculum. In a competency-based system, students can proceed at their own pace in every subject, enabling teachers to respond to individual needs, interests, and challenges. Number three, learning happens anytime, anywhere. Students will often make important discoveries about themselves and the world around them when they learn beyond the traditional school day and outside the traditional school walls. Learning doesn't start and stop when the bells ring. And number four, the last key to student-centered learning is students take ownership. Don't make a decision about students without students. They play a direct role in their own success. Actively engaging with the process to ensure the impact is lasting and meaningful. For student-centered learning to work, all four of these principles must work together. This is not an a la carte approach. It's reimagining education so it works for all students. The fact is, our world is changing. And with the latest in child development research, we know better than ever before how children and young adults learn. The facts are there, and they point to the need for a new system of learning designed around each student. And when the student becomes stronger and more focused, all of us will benefit from a new generation that is contributing to our communities and our world in so many ways. This is student-centered learning. Let's take a quiz. Let's all take a quiz.